Hello everyone and welcome to CK Med. My name is Clark and I'll be taking you through lipoproteins and hyperlipidemia disorders today. So now on to uh, some of the actual diseases. So one of the first ones we're going to get to and we're going to describe are hypo, uh, hypolipoproteinemias. And, um, and so uh, the first one we kind of get to is what uh, known as Tangier's disease or hereditary hypoalpha lipoproteinemia. So just think for a second, which molecule had alpha lipoprotein? Well, hopefully you're thinking HDL, and that's correct. And so this Tangier's disease is only found in the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia. Um, uh, I don't know why it's specifically there, but it is a genetic deficiency in your ABCA1 cholesterol transporter. Remember, that was the guy that took cholesterol out of your cell, spit it into the blood, allowing for it to undergo that LCAT reaction in order to be esterified and picked up from HDL. At this point, we're not actually making HDL molecules. Um, our, all our ones are pretty much nascent and floating around. We can't measure those, and so our, our HDL is actually very, very low. Our HDL is not working properly, leaving LDL to be the major major contributor to this person's health, and we know LDL is bad. So um, pretty much uh, what we can also measure is that there's also low ApoA1 um, because they're not being secreted very well. And so symptoms of this, you're going to see orange tonsils. This is actually the only place you're ever going to see orange tonsils in, in a disease. You, you'll see red and erythematous ones and ones with like exudate and all grossness, swollen patients and stuff like that. But as far as orange tonsils, the only one that you're going to find this disease, Tangier's disease. Other things are peripheral neuropathy, um, and of course, because we have low healthy density lipoprotein and uh, just remaining normal of LDL, uh, that's going to lead to increased uh, possibilities of having cardiovascular disease, and uh, like MIs or myocardial infarctions, and it's because of this ratio. HDL to LDL is low, um, so uh, atherosclerosis is better. Pedosplenomegaly comes with this, and sometimes you can see corneal opacities. So uh, another hypolipoproteinemia uh, is A-beta lipoproteinemia. And so uh, this is actually due to a deficiency in the microsomal tag transferase protein, or MTP deficiency. And so uh, this is actually, uh, we talked about this earlier, this is actually required in order to assemble ApoB48 onto chylomicrons. If we don't have this, we have no chylomicrons floating around. So this is what you're looking for um, in a stem, is when someone has absent chylomicrons, after the, even after they just ate, um, then we want to be looking for an ApoB48 deficiency along with uh, the genetics for microsomal tag transferase protein deficiency. So symptoms uh, what come with, with this are failure to thrive in infancy. Remember, uh, if we're not getting chylomicrons into the blood to be absorbed, then we're not absorbing uh, our fats from our gut. When we're not absorbing our fats from our gut, it, you know, this whole system's backed up, our fat continues in our, in our bowel and makes it its way into the large intestines and then we poop it out. And when we poop out this fat, um, this is known as steatorrhea and it's very se severe and it's fat malabsorption uh, in children. And so their, their poop's gonna be uh, floating if they're in toilets, uh, if they're old enough children at least, or it's gonna be very foul, fatty stool um, in, in the diaper of, of these babies. So um, the problem with this is we have severe fat malabsorption and so not only are we not getting fats but we're not getting everything that comes with it including your um, uh, fat soluble soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. So uh, be looking out for those deficiencies and that's super high for uh, high yield for step as well. Um, we can also see tags uh, accumulating in the liver and intestines because we're over uh, producing um, some of, some of those, those molecules um, from our, our, our glucose diet and such like that. Other associated diseases, uh, you can read down the bottom, retinitis, pigmentosa, blindness, peripheral, peripheral neuropathy, uh, vitamin A and E, and also uh, D and K, like I mentioned. Um, D, although, can be uh, absorbed or produced from your skin and your kidneys, so as long as that's working, you should be able to get enough D, um, but uh, the K uh, is required in, in absorption, so that's, you have to be careful with that guy. Uh, but you will learn all those deficiencies in term two. So now on to our hyperlipidemia. So again, I put this order up, and uh, this actually comes into play in remembering these diseases. Um, and, and I really like this. This is actually pretty cool. So uh, here we go. So uh, there's actually five types that we're going to go through. And uh, the first one, type 1, is familiar hyperchylomicronemia. This is an autosomal recessive disorder. And uh, pretty much what happens is you have a buildup in one lipid made up uh, in the body, and then you only have one thing that's high, and it happens to be that first and largest thing 
that we have in this order. So the first that we had in our body was chylomicrons. It is the largest thing um, that is uh, found as well, and it is the only thing that is high, and that is high chylomicrons. Um, so if you see just high chylomicrons, you have type 1 hyperlipidemia. Um, this is due to a lipoprotein lipase deficiency, which makes sense because remember you have those giant chylomicrons. They're not going to fit uh, into your liver cells to be absorbed. They need to be made a little bit smaller in order to fit. Only way we can make it smaller is by activation uh, and use of this lipoprotein lipase. So if the enzyme is deficiency or the thing that activates is APOC2 or we have an, an inhibitor of the enzyme, then we're not going to make our chylomicrons into smaller chylomicron remnants for them to be absorbed. And that will lead to just chylomicrons being elevated. Um, it, uh, what happens is um, uh, because you have high chylomicrons, you have a lot of tags stored in there. When you have a lot of tags, whenever you have lots of tags flowing around in the blood, um, you can have pancreatitis. Uh, and then you'll have xanthomas, retinitis, no cardiovascular risk because you're not making LDL. <clears throat> or you're not having high LDL production. And then on uh, electrophoresis, you'll have a very thick like milk cream layer on, uh, on that electrophoresis. So now onto your type 2s. So uh, type 2 uh, has two uh, forms of this, and so I'll describe each of these. So type 2A is familial hypercholesterolemia. You might have uh, came across that in the autosomal di um, dominant disorders. Uh, in your genetic section. Um, and so how I kind of remember this is you, what you do is you take the two Roman numeral and you make those twos and uh, two uh, Roman numeral letters into two L's and then you separate them and put a little D in there and guess what? You have VLDL. So type 2 actually has high VLDL and that's the only thing. Why? Because this is your A type. A is the first letter so you only have one thing that's high. In B, however, you have two things and we'll get to each of those. So uh, in type 2A you have a deficiency in that LDL receptor which makes sense as to why you're not absorbing LDL and so it's staying in the blood and you're going to be building up uh, these, this cholesterol floating around in certain areas that you're going to find it and this is going to be found in two different places. One, around the eyes and this is known as xanthelesmas and uh, two, over uh, and around your tendons. And these are called uh, tendinous xanthomas. And the way I remember this is your Achilles. Oh, what do you know? Look at those two L's look like a two. Um, and that's your Achilles tendon. Also, you have tons of LDL, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease. Totally makes sense. Now, type 2B is familiar combined hyperlipidemia. So again, you do that too, you do that too, you do that uh, L, D, L, and oh, Again, uh, your VLDL has this, and like I said, 2B is the second letter, and so you're going to have two things that are high, and that is going to be the two things that have L and L in it, which are high LDL and high VLDL. Okay, so uh, that's how you can remember these. Again, it's going to be the same presentation uh, pretty much as, as these guys. The, the deficiency, however, is not just LDL receptors, but you add in why the heck would VLDL be high and not any of the other guys, and this is because you have an increased production of that VLDL. Uh, and that's what leads to those guys. And again, atherosclerosis, cardiovascular, and then with VLDL, this is high tags, you got to throw in pancreatitis as well. So that will kind of, that pancreatitis will give you the clue um, as to that this person uh, actually has a type 2B as opposed to type 2A. <clears throat> so now type 3, uh, this is actually my favorite one. This is uh, familial dis beta lipoproteinemia. I'll try to say that 15 times fast. Uh, so um, this uh, uh, type three, uh, what you kind of do to determine why is that, why what's the deficiency in this is you take the three Roman numeral, you flip it on its side, and then guess what? You just have to put a line right here, and you have an apoE. Uh, or you have an E, which is an apoE deficiency. So now you ask yourself, oh shoot. Man, I have to go back on the slides. What are the what are the things that have APOE and are requiring uh, APOE for their for for their circulatory function? And so this is actually really easy. Do you know why? Because it's literally one, two, three. It is the first three things, and it is the largest three things in the order that I've been presenting to you this entire time. So this is your three things that are high, and there are the first three things in the circulation, and they are the three largest lipoproteins, and that is high chylomicrons, high VLDL, and high IDL. And so what are you going to see? You're going to see these uh, xanthomas all over the place, but only in three specific places. And this is dif differentiates it from a lot of the diseases. So watch this. So you know that song, heads, shoulder, or um, heads, oh shoot, 
Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Yeah, it's that song. Uh, I forgot about that song. Okay. Uh, this is actually specific for this disease. Why? Because it's palms, elbows, and knees, elbows, and knees, right? So that's how you remember that this is type 3. It's because it's in the palms, in the elbows, and knees. What do you know? Three different places. Oh, look at all that. Rule of threes right here. So that's palms, elbows, and knees. The palms is something that really gives it away uh, for this type 3, but watch out for elbows and knees and that will give you your type 3 uh, hyperlipidemia. Again, because VLDL is involved uh, and chylomicrons, you're going to have lots of tags. Lots of tags can lead to pancreatitis as well. Uh, you don't have LDL, so atherosclerosis is not a part of this disease. So now type 4 and 5. Um, I sh should have colored this one 5, that's okay. Uh, but type 4, pretty much uh, this is uh, familiar hyper pre-beta lipoproteinemia. Uh, that's even better than the last one. Um, and there, this one, uh, how I kind of organized this, I wrote this Roman numeral in two different colors on purpose. So we have our uh, Roman numeral 4, and this is a V. I'm just going to say uh, that's a V. And so there's going to be something having to do with VLDL, which is nice. There's a V, like 4 and 5. VLDL is involved, just so you know. However, this has a 1 in front of it. It has a 1 Roman numeral in front of this V. So therefore, it only has one thing that's high. If we said it has VLDL and it only has one thing that's high, then it has to be only VLDL is high, and that's type 4. Okay? Um, pretty much, uh, this is due to an overproduction of VLDL. Same thing as in that 2V, like we talked about. Uh, how this happens is actually we upregulate our ApoB100 protein, um, and that actually causes secretion of VLDL a little bit prematurely, and that leads to high levels of this. Um, and that's why we have high tags. Remember, with high tags, you got acute pancreatitis. All right, for type 5, this is familial mixed hypertriacylglycerolemia. Um, and uh, pretty much, uh, it's really nice math, actually, how this works. It's kind of cool. And so you know that 1 plus 4 equals 5? Oh, that's so cool. And guess what? This is exactly what it is. What is what, what happens in type 4? Well, we just described in type 4, you have high VLDL. Well, what happened in type 1? Well, type 1, remember, was that first thing that was high, high chylomicrons. And guess what? High chylomicrons. So type 5 is actually a mixture of both of these diseases. It has type 1 and type 4 put together, and you know what 1 plus 4 is? Is equal type 5 uh, hyperlipidemia. So be looking out for those. The features are going to be the same as both of those pretty much put together. So uh, acute pancreatitis for both of those guys, and xanthomas all over because of the chylomicrons, uh, including retinitis and such like that. Um, and that is your hyperlipidemias. Um, we also have a couple other lipids that I wanted to mention to you uh, before we finish this video. Um, we have uh, LDL uh, B, uh, and so I, I kind of described this. Uh, LDL A is the one that we've been referring to. Um, uh, that's one that's in circulation, gets uh, absorbed via your uh, LDL receptors. However, if it gets cleaved even further, if it stays a little bit extra in circulation, gets cut down by uh, uh, your lipoprotein uh, lipase and your um, hepatic lipase, uh, what happens is this cuts it down to an even smaller particle, even more penetrable, uh, a, a LDL particle that can kind of mingle its way in between your endothelial cells, your blood vessel cells, so that it can get into there and cause even more atherosclerosis, is LDLB. So um, just be careful that this uh, increases risk of atherosclerosis, so um, that's something we want to be watching out for treatment. Uh, and in some we weird uh, genetic cases, we have um, LP little a, and actually it's a large part of our population. So it's something, uh, as a family doctor, you should be doing a little bit of blood panel. If you're going to be checking someone's lipid, just also throw in looking for LP little a, um, because then you can uh, uh, treat this guy. Um, and so pretty much what uh, LP little a is, it's, a, it's like an apoprotein. Um, it's an a apoprotein that's on this LDL particle. And so what happens is this molecule, it doesn't necessarily cause atherosclerosis, but what it does, it actually complete, competes for fibrin uh, as a substrate for plasminogen. So remember in our clotting stuff we talked about a couple weeks ago, um, we uh, initially created the platelet plug, we hooked our platelets together by, our, by uh, your um, fibrinogen, and then we activated uh, fibrinogen into uh, fibrin um, via the coagulation pathway, and that kind of got our little dancers a little bit closer and held them a little bit tighter, right? Um, and at this point, uh, we now had a solid kind of clot. Well, there's also the last step, which we need to do and break it down. And that is act, uh, done via plasminogen. 
So what plasminogen does is it breaks down clot. So if we have a big clot, we want to break it down. So say if we have a clot in our heart, we want to make sure we're getting blood supplied to the area behind the clot. Um, and so if we don't, we have what is known as a myocardial infarction. And so that's where plasminogen kind of keeps that balance between forming clots and not. However, what happens is if this person has a lot of LP little a, it stops plasminogen from working and cutting down that fibrin. So now this person is more prone to making clots and more prone to having myocardial infarctions, strokes, all sorts of stuff. And so, uh, as far as uh, clotting goes, and so this is something we definitely want to be treating and lowering in our patients if we find it. And the only drug that does this, only drug, is vitamin B3, niacin. And it's not in small amounts. You actually have a, have to have a large amount. It has to be prescribed. If you're you want to get smart and go to the store and buy some B3, you can, but I wouldn't suggest taking it in high amounts. Uh, you're not going to be very comfortable. You're going to have red flushing of the skin and everything like that. But uh, you can talk with your doctor if you have um, some sort of cardiovascular risk of atherosclerosis uh, or MI or anything with an LP little A that you can uh, take niacin to treat that. You're at SGU and you're thinking about step one. There are so many resources and so many opinions. How do you know which path to take? You've worked so hard and you deserve to match into the specialty of your dreams. Med School Tutors has helped nearly a thousand SGU students get their best scores on their CBSE and USMLEs through highly personalized one on one tutoring and individualized advice. Our SGU students see average Step 1 score increases of over 30 points when working with us. Scores that are their tickets to competitive residency spots around the country. Schedule your free phone consult today to be matched with your tutor. Med School Tutors, get where you want to go. And so that completes our, our uh, kind of module on lipoproteins and, and diseases, and hopefully that helped. And uh, make sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'll be uh, posting videos uh, more for, for term fours and for term twos uh, as we go throughout the term. All right. Happy studying.